Hey, everybody. I'm trying to get situated. I just looked out when I hit the live button, and there is a big, fat squirrel sitting in the tree right outside my office window looking at me. <laughs> um, how odd is that, MMM? Um, MMM, you're going to have to tell me your name today. Today's the day. You've got to tell me your name because I can't deal with that long th MMM thing. Um, good morning, D. Uh, I already said good morning to Jamela and Daryl and, and Lisa and um, Gina and Johnny. Johnny, I was thinking about you. I'm worried about you, Johnny. Uh, Jack, good morning. Okay. Uh, Jack can only be with us for a few minutes. So say hi to Jack. Um, how is everybody doing at your house, Jack? Um, I know everybody's got a lot on their minds. I know I do. Ian Schultz, good morning. Where are you writing from, Ian? I don't remember. Silver Garcia. Oh, let's see if I can remember where you are. Hey, when you say good morning, everybody, just say, hey, it's, it's Ian from, Ian from, wherever or hey it's it's silver garcia from good morning teresa hi maddie maddie is in iceland i can always remember that for some reason i think it's amazing oh and san antonio okay thank you connie good morning connie and i've already been in touch this morning while i'm drinking this i just wanted to show you when i was packing up to go i found these little these are, and somebody may know the name of these because I am not up on my collectibles, the names of collectibles, but these are plastic picnic. It's a set of picnic uh, dishes that were, was in an old a vintage picnic basket that was in our garage for 25 years. And I decided I wanted to use those dishes because, uh, they're plastic. <laughs> and I didn't have a set of dishes. I was going to order a set of Corel dinnerware. And I thought, this is such so much more interesting. And they're all different colors, yellow and, and orange and, and, and uh, turquoise. I just love them if anybody has seen those. Uh, I don't It's There's not a complete set, unfortunately. Uh, good morning, Martha Monterey, near Big Sur, California. Martha. Did you see my Big Sur videos? Have we talked about that? Um, that sort of segues into what I wanted to, the first thing I want to do, even though I don't know if these people are tuned in. They're probably not. Um, Vanita may be, but as Monday, I haven't really had a chance to talk about this because I had the laryngitis so badly, and I probably shouldn't stay on too long today because I am still getting over this. Um, but I, I can't even imagine a worse time and circumstance to be moving than I had. I mean, I guess if I was in Alaska and there was four feet of snow, yeah, I guess that would have been worse and sick. But uh, it was pouring down rain. I was totally 100% dependent upon the help of Stan Gerlach, who, if you recall, if you saw my Big Sur videos, uh, he and his wife, Linda, had their big Father's Day family gathering up there. I think they had 35 people uh, at one point, you know, coming and going, and me. <laughs> All family members and me. And they had uh, not wanted me to be alone and thought I could really enjoy that trip, and I did. And I felt empowered by it. Anyway, Stan was amazing, amazing. He had a mask on and he brought me apples and oranges already cut up. His wife had already cut them up and somehow we got it done. I mean, but he was literally just dumping things. We were just unloading cars and just dumping things wherever and uh, it's going to take me a month 
at least to just be able to have some kind of order in this place. Now, I see a lot of people joining. Big Sur is magical, and I want to go back. Bill in Fairhope. That makes it so easy, Bill. <laughs> Fairhope is in Alaska, right? Wait, where is Fairhope? Um, good morning, Rebecca, at Food Forest Next Door in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Rebecca and I have actually met. Good morning, them all. Uh, good morning, Yvonne. Yvonne's been with me for a very long time. Backyard Edible Garden in Los Angeles. We still have not met. You did not get to come and see my garden. I'm so sad. Oh, well. Saudi Arabia. Okay, wonderful. Well, you know, Amal is in Saudi. So you two should connect. And uh, I'm assuming, Ahmed, that you are young. I think you told us that you're a teenager, I think. Coastal Alaska. What, what must it be like in coastal Alaska? I wanted to go to Alaska. For years, I've wanted to do a, a cruise up to Alaska. It hasn't happened. Good morning, Joshua. Where are you writing from? Thank you so much. What is your name, Backyard Edible Garden? Oh, 28. Wonderful. Okay, playing the piano. You're the one that got me to sing, right, Ahmed? Okay, we're going to sing today, everybody. I don't have much of a voice, but we all need this so much. And it came to me just a few minutes ago. We're going to sing. So, so start Googling the lyrics to let it be, because unless you have that memorized in your mind, you need to look it up. We're going to sing it together coming up. Um, John Lennon's song, Let It Be. Okay. Greenville, Greenville, Tennessee. And I don't know exactly where that is. Tracy. Oh, Tracy, what are you doing? Tracy usually doesn't get to, uh, to, oh, Tracy, everybody is, more people are probably tuning in today because a lot of churches are doing streaming services or staggered services. Tracy is now singing in the choir. She's made a big step to, towards her public persona. And uh, by the time I come up, and see Tracy in Pennsylvania and see their beautiful farm and all the amazing things they're doing. She is going to be such a great on-camera presence. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to take a lot of credit for that. Uh, let's see. Anita, good morning. I missed it. Where are you? Um, let's see. Denise. I've been in touch with Denise already this morning. Anita Johnson, where are you writing from? Uh, Amal, I am feeling better each day. I am not completely over this thing. And I'm still being very careful about uh, not being around people, not going anywhere, not doing anything. I've got so much to do in my place. Oh, it's I did get a little bit done yesterday for the first time, and it felt so good. I washed my dishes. Now, washing my dishes, you think, well, then what's the big deal? Okay, well, <laughs> the big deal was... Remember all those cuttings and all those plants, the ones that didn't have to be outside, they wound up in my sink, my double sink in my kitchen. And so I just had like passion fruit vines and butingan tomato vines and and I couldn't eat and, and dirty dishes were like down behind. Oh, it was it was it was disgusting. So I got that all cleaned up. I haven't cleaned up the stove yet, but uh because that the stove is where I've been. Because I had no space on the countertop. I don't have much countertop, but I, I had no space because it's all piled up. And so I was using the stove for my water pitcher and the place I was loading up my cacao in my canteens. Now I just want to mention this. I got this free at Pharmaca for a one hundred dollar purchase when I went and stocked up on vitamins and stuff. Now this is a this really is a great canteen for keeping liquids hot. But I think it's really ironic that it's called clean can, clean canteen, because you cannot, I defy you to, to take the lid off and pour some into a cup without it dripping and splattering and spilling all over. Now, maybe I'm just a total slob, but um, that's my experience. I have a lot to cover and I, I can't talk for a long time today. And we are going to sing. Um, so I'm getting. I'm trying to get used to my apartment life. It's not easy after 
having a quiet home for 25 years. Um, there is a little kid, two little kids underneath me. And from the moment they wake up in the morning until the moment that they go to bed, they are, there's a hallway between the bedrooms and they are boom, 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 and that started at 6.30 this morning and, you know, it will continue. And that's underneath my office. So um, I do have traffic noise also, except for right now, there's not a lot of people on the streets. So it's, it's quiet that way until somebody's trying to show off their motorcycle and goes by and just makes a really big noise. Why is it people with motorcycles feel that, feel the need to have to make a lot of noise? Uh, let's see, Marietta Moore, good morning, here from New York. Uh, where are you in New York, Marietta? Mariette, I should say. Uh, Leslie, thank you. Leslie, Leslie in Los Angeles. Leslie in Los Angeles. Maybe I'll remember that. I hope so. I'll write it down. Maybe that will help. Um, Leslie at Bas Backyard Garden. Uh, what Did I ask you what area you're in in, in Los Angeles? I don't remember. I probably did. Um, okay, so that sort of answers your question, Amal. And uh, I'm glad to hear that everybody, what does Tracy have to say here? Um, I was going to reach out to you when I was there to ask if you would have interest in seeing this. Show. Wait, Marietta, Marietta, I missed something. What show? My show? Yes, Bill. Uh, oh, I knew that. I knew that because when I was in Mobile, I, yeah. Were you watching then? Is that how I knew about Fairhope? It must be. It's a community near Mobile. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Um, I heard from, speaking of Mobile, I heard from Pat Smith. I don't know if she's on yet, but Pat is going to be featured in some kind of a magazine a Mobile Bay magazine, maybe it's a lifestyle magazine or something with her recipes and the things she's cooking down there. So I'm really happy she's getting a little attention. Oh yeah, Anita. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Teresa from Pensacola. Uh, I, I am, oh. Mariette is a ballet dancer and we were on tour and last week we had to get sent back before we got to head to California. Oh, I see. Well, I am thrilled that you are a ballet dancer and that you're watching. And, uh, you know, Tori at Permaculture Homestead, he and his wife, well, his wife is still teaching ballet at a, at a studio and they were both ballet dancers and that's how they met. And I, I did a video with Tori in 2017 when I was traveling through South Carolina. And, uh, and it's, I, when I was in New York, when I lived in New York, I was always fascinated by the ballet dancers and going to the ballet. I took a few ballet classes. You know, young actors are supposed to do all those kinds of dance classes and things. And I just, I have always found that when I leave the floor, <laughs> when I leave the floor or leave the ground, I lose track of where I am in space. And maybe it's that propios, proprioceptor thing. It must be that thing. That's, you must, you must have to have to have a really good proprioceptor um, nerves, is it? Uh, to be able to know where you are in space. You know, I was never able to go around without getting dizzy. I was never able to leap across the floor without going, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I was never able to spring dive. I tried so hard to learn to spring dive off of a diving board when I was young. You take one, two, three steps, go boing, and you go down like that. But I would go boing and I would go up and I'd go, now what do I do? How do I get that way? <laughs> Ah, anyway, enough about me. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Son of a gun, GM from Fab Phoenix, Jeremy. Geoff Harding, found you from the Lufa vid. Ah. 
Um, well, they'll, uh, let's see, Jeff, the vine, well, you have to support them. The, 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 uh, he's asking about the loofah vines. How do, how do you keep them growing up straight? You have to support them. You have to give them a mesh or a, I don't know how many you have. If you have one, you can just do a, a stake, uh, but it will send shoots out this way. So it needs a trellis. Just go back and, and look at any of my loofah videos. You saw my Luva video. You saw how I did it. I had, I had the nylon. I had, first, I had fencing, and then I had nylon. But I had ten vines going up. So I had that going all the way up ten feet. And then I had, when they started going across those big beams, then we did. Uh, I think I had Eric tie them or something. No, you have to support them. You, I mean, you could just let them crawl around on the on the ground, but. I love seeing the thing about loofah is if the vine is supported, the loofah will hang straight down and have a nice shape. If you don't, it could be curved or twisted or whatever. And then you don't have these beautiful loofah sponges. So that's very important. And thank you for joining us, Geoff. And I hope you subscribe to my channel. Let's see. Good morning from Trudy. It's freezing in in New Jersey. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, very quickly, I want to address something. Good morning. Let's see. I just want to make sure I've said hello to everybody. Yes, Bill, I am in my new place, but I am in in such a disorganized fashion that it's uh, but you know, I've been sick. And so I just, uh, when I moved Monday was D day and I moved and, um, in the pouring rain with the help of Stan Gerlach and Vanita. Oh my gosh. If you re remember Vanita, she was the angel that showed up and helped me. She has now put in four eight hour days and she has a lot of my stuff stored at her place. She came and just got car loads because I had to get it out of there and I didn't want to get rid of it. She took all my compost, not all of it. I have one tub here. It's part, it's just sitting in front of my car in my little car hang. I don't have a, a garage or anything. Anyway, I put all of my garden stuff that I decided I had to have here, including my little red wagon. There's a little storage in the car hang. I'm calling it a car hang. It's a carport with three cars. I mean, we are, our cars are that close together. It's, it's like surgery to get my car in there. Anyway, uh, like it starts like right where the, uh, above the hood would be of a car, a storage compartment that's about, probably about six feet wide and about, three, three feet deep, something like that. I'm not sure how tall it is, but I don't feel like it's strong enough for me to climb in there and, and stand. Well, there's no room right now. Anyway, it's completely packed. I don't know how I'm going to function. Everybody just be patient. I am going to be able to function. I have so many plans here and they're doing so well. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mariette, I would lo have loved to, now I understand your comment. I would have loved to have seen your ballet show. Oh my gosh. Mm. I need a, uh, Um, and the, uh, Connie is asking about Lyndon, and and I wanted to say Lyndon is doing okay, considering. And where's Deep South? Um, the, the things are happening too fast. I, I should just not talk and try to keep up with everything. Jamela says, uh, Teresa Okra is one of my favorites. I don't know if you can find out a lot of details from my videos because I. 
I haven't had that much success. Okra likes hot weather and it, it just never, and, and a lot of sun. Hot and sunny, that's what okra loves. And you have to give it some space because, uh, you know, they can get to be, you really should have plants at least, I don't know, a foot apart, I think. And, uh, and you know, to, and you need a lot of plants to have a, a mess, as they say in the South, a mess of okra. So I would love to have an opportunity to grow my own okra again. But, you know, whenever I've grown it, I've had like one or two plants and, you know, you go, you go out and there's one or two okra every other day or something. And I just stand there and eat it and it's gone. I don't have time. I don't have an opportunity to actually cook anything and make anything out of it. Is Christina here? Hi, Christina. Thank you for joining. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's funny, um, Mariette. Let's see. Silver says he's growing cucumbers for the first time. Will they trellis up themselves or should I keep an out? Oh, you have to, you know, you they will not trellis up themselves. You have to uh, trellis cu cucumbers. Uh, you absolutely have to provide that. Uh, okra. Uh, well, Amal, uh, when you harvest is uh, any time after they're like two inches, really because they're very tender and they, they can get out to here, but, but what you don't want to do is wait too long. But when, if you wait to, for okra to get hard, it is, it's like you need a saw, you need a serrated knife to cut into it and it's too late. It's like cardboard. You want to, you want to pick them when they're still tender to squeeze on. Uh, and literally you can, any time after they're an inch and a half long, you can start. You can start uh, pulling them, cut it, cut them off is best. Cut them is best. You don't want to damage the plant. And then I just eat it for. I eat it raw. Yes, I remember Bill. I do. Candace, what are we talking about? In Italy, we lived in. <laughs> oh, candies. Oh, 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 that reminds me, Gina, um, our first apartment in, in Virginia uh, was wood floor. And uh, the there was a gal who got up at six in, in the morning every morning and she put on her wooden clogs on a wooden floor. And she was clog, 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 clog. Oh, my gosh. Ah, oh, okay. Let's see if I'm anywhere near caught up. Anita. Yes, Anita is confirming. It's good to harvest them when they're small. Uh, when they get to be four inches, you'll be very lucky if they haven't already gotten hard. Let's see. Haffy, I was gonna text you. You don't don't wait for the notification. Set your alarm on your phone. You know I'm here. Oh, Jamela's got very good advice about okra, everybody. So try to see that. She says uh, you test the tip of the okra. If it snaps, it's good to pick. If it springs back. It's too far gone and should be left to dry for the parrots. Interesting. Joshua loves my stories. I, my stories, Joshua, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Deep South uh, with Mr. Tom. Good morning. I am doing better. I am self-isolating. Absolutely. I did go out yesterday. To, let, me, let me talk about that live stream for a minute. I went out yesterday to hang up my laundry because we have a clothesline here, which is fantastic. And I did a little live stream based upon this, this um, audio clip that was sent to me through Messenger by a, a good friend of mine. And it's it totally sounded legit. I totally believe it's legit. But as my dear 
friend Dottie, and uh, you'll remember Dottie from my Climbing Rose videos last year. And uh, Gardening with a Master Gardener was one of the videos that I did with her. And Dottie pointed out that, um, in her opinion, that I should not have shared that and I thought about that and I thought, you know, I just wanted to try to help and get the word out. But it's true. I, um, and even though I said I'm not a doctor, I'm just sharing what I heard. It's, it's, it, it, sharing what you hear can sometimes create more fear and confusion. And I apologize, uh, for being hasty and doing that. And I, um, I decided after that, and also Connie, who is on now, Connie sent me a link, um, a New York Times article that, that said uh, that there's a lot of talk going around about gargling with salt water and, um, and some other things stopping the virus and, uh, or killing the virus germs. And we really don't know if that's true. So after those two things, that, that feedback from Connie and Dottie, I decided to unlist that live stream. So it may still be in your inbox, but you won't find it on the channel. Uh, because I don't want to, I don't want to confuse anyone and I don't want to uh, uh, cause anybody more fear. And I don't want to cause anybody a lot of work of <laughs> washing your clothes in the bathtub and then hanging them on the line like I did yesterday. <laughs> Hopefully you have a washing machine that's accessible. Um, anyway, uh, so that's that's that. And then I think I covered all of that. Now, while everybody is on, I want to sing a song. Let me see if I'm caught up on comments. I'm not. Let's see. Dara, Deep Sat. Uh, oh, yes. Johnny. Eric was supposed to be here. Yes. Johnny's asking about Eric. He was supposed to be here yesterday. Our, and I had said something about that on a the live stream or a video this week. And uh, I didn't call him until Friday. And I said, you know, I'm still sick and I really don't think I want to be around anybody. And so uh, I will pay him, of course, for missing that day of work. Um, but what he's going to do when he comes is there's a lot of work to do around here. Okay. <laughs> there is a fabulous planter. This is an old building and we have a lot of, um, plantings here, but it's the kind of thing that will grow in very depleted soil like succulents. And we've got some, I don't know if you call those palm trees, really don't know what they are, but there's a lot of foliage in the courtyards. There's two buildings, courtyards. There's a lot of foliage like that. And, uh, and, and then in the corridor between the two buildings, it's just a corridor and the various residents have put in, a, it's from the front to the very back. It's pot after pot after pot. We have a huge container garden. I'm the only one that has brought in edibles. Uh, there's my friend, Amy, who's really into roses. And so she's got many pots of roses over there and I am depending on her to resuscitate my rose. And uh, so all of my trees need to be potted up. Amy bought larger pots for me and I have soil and I have amendments. And, you know, the, the makers at Foliage Pro, Dynagrow is the, is the name of the company. I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned a few months back that they wanted me to be a spokesperson for them. And they sent me, we haven't worked out the details in terms of money, but they sent me uh, a whole box of, of, uh, of small containers of all of their line of products. So what I'd like to do starting here and starting now is using those products and see how they do and reporting back to you. And then hopefully we can work out something with the company. So that's uh, Eric will be here next week. God willing, and uh, uh, you'll you're gonna be able to see us doing another workday video. But we're gonna be repotting here, and there's 
I want him to bring some mortar or I'll pick up some mortar. There's some loose stones in the, in the courtyard in there. And there's a big planter with completely depleted soil in it. I'd like to get that soil out and get that whole thing planted. I think the people that live here would enjoy that. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So let's see. I am way behind on comments. Johnny, what were you saying? Um, Tracy is saying gargling with salt water and being extra clean will not hurt. That's true. It's none of the things that I said yesterday will hurt. It's, it's just a lot of work and it may or may not kill the virus. And I, I made it sound like that I knew that all those things were going to kill the virus. And I don't know that because I don't know how the virus operates in the body. Oh, Lisa is saying, this is a, uh, Lisa is saying, and you put this in all caps so I'd see it. Do you have a way to have groceries delivered and so forth to help you stay in and recover? Well, Lisa, if you saw that video that I did, when was that? Tuesday or Wednesday with the red, red sweater I or coral sweater. Uh, so Amy and Amy had gone out and she brought me all of these groceries. It was on my, I'm completely stocked up and um, there's enough food in there for a month, really, maybe not a month, but in addition, Hazel, you know, Hazel from tea and scones uh, and tales from post post-war London, my friend Hazel called yesterday and said that she is having organic vegetables and fruits delivered by this woman. She's a German lady and her specialty that her business is uh, making fermented vegetables. But in addition, during this crisis, she is delivering organic produce. She only works with two farms. She goes straight to the farm. She takes everything, puts it in her box, which has been disinfected. She, le she leaves it at your door. It's a $40 box loaded with stuff. Hazel showed me the list of stuff she's getting. And I said, that sounds great to me. I'm getting cold. Um, wow. Um, I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I called her up immediately and she's bringing me a box today and she leaves it at the front door. We don't even, I, I leave the money. She does. We don't even see each other. So yes, the answer is yes, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, let's see. And after that, Tracy said, Jamela, I would love to see your garden. I really would. And Leslie says, Yes, uh, Leslie, I definitely would would suggest waiting until hopefully this chaos is going to pass. And uh, we can have get back to some kind of normalcy with planting for summer. I mean, I would like to have, I don't know how I would protect tomato plants. That's a public, I mean, it's not public, but, you know, anybody can walk from the street through that corridor. And so protecting fruits and vegetables, I don't know. By the way, does anybody know when a loquat is ripe? Because my loquat looks ripe. It's starting to kind of feel soft and it's yellow. And so what I want to do is I want to do a video and just show you what I've got here. And then when Eric comes on Saturday and we get them repotted, that'll be another video. And that's kind of the best I can do uh, as, uh, in addition to live streams while this is all going on. Uh, Moira, the project that I was going to start in Delray, she's very eager for me to start down there, but she took off for Montana. 
So she has a cabin up there and there, I think that's where she is. And then David, you know, David Hillside Garden, he had to go into the hospital for a scheduled procedure on Wednesday. And uh, so he's recovering from that, but he wants to get back to the garden soon. And I have one more video that I haven't shared with you. I'll edit that. To, I'll edit that today. And I have one more video from the late bloomer garden. I mean, I have so much footage. I could make, I could make late bloomer garden 1.0 videos for the next year. <laughs> If I wanted to go back and just, you know, um, uh, take archived material and just reformula reformat it. And, and uh, anyway, that takes time. Mm. I want elderberry so badly I cannot stand it. And I think no one here would even know what elderberry is. So I could easily grow that and people would leave it alone. But I've got to have space. And so I can't just move into a place and say, okay, all you people, get this crap out of here and let me grow some edibles. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to do that, but I'm not going to do that. Um, <clears throat> Gina says she wants to see pictures. I don't know what you're re referring to. Lisa's talking about cuttings. Um, I don't. Chili, no, it is not pre recorded. It is live. Where are you writing from? Yes, Happy, thank you. A loquat, I believe a loquat is in this. Could loquat be in the citrus family? I'm not sure. It is an evergreen. It is an evergreen tree that fruits and it makes little yellowish fruits about that big. And it's a relative of the kumquat, but kumquats, are, and that's, that's why I was wondering if it's a citrus because a kumquat is definitely a citrus and it's very, very sour. I can't handle those. Let's see. I didn't say hello to Steph Agostino from Belgium. I was in Belgium once a long time ago and I, I bought the most beautiful piece of lace and I still have it. And that was in 1983. No. Yeah. Something like that. And I thought, and I went to, and I remember I went to a church. I was only there for a day, I think a day or two. And I went to a church and I remember being shocked because the Mother Mary, and this, this segues perfectly into our song, the Mother, the Mother Mary uh, um, was holding the Christ figure and it was behind bulletproof glass. And I thought, wow. It was like my, this wake up call that, that people would destroy, first of all, art in general. And then they would destroy religious art. And I, and I, it was a real wake up call. You know, that you, that, that, that what is in the heart of someone who wants to destroy something so beautiful and so meaningful, I, I, I still can't understand it. But Belgium was beautiful. I'd love to go back. Okay, where are we? Does everybody have the lyrics to let it be? If you just joined, I want you to Google really quickly. And I'm talking to you, Geoff, or oh wait, what was your name from Belgium? It jumped. Debbie, good morning. I don't think I said. It changes colors to yellow, right? What are we looking up, Tracy? When it's yellow orange near the stem with no green, soft and pulls off. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, chef, Steph, Steph. Uh, okay, everybody, look up those lyrics. We're gonna sing it. I don't have much of a voice, but I'm gonna lead. I'm gonna try. Uh, 
And Lisa says her elderberry grew in a pot. I want to get a plant. I don't, I don't want to take time for seeds. I want a plant. So I wonder if I could order a plant. That would be the best thing. I wouldn't have to go anywhere. Uh, let's see. Chile is in California. Wonderful. I always keep one eye open when I wash me face. What? <laughs> oh, my goodness, Teresa. Ter Teresa. You guys, if you haven't watched the video with Teresa, please watch it. I need, I need more views on that video. I need more views on all my recent videos, everybody. Um, just spend a, spend a few hours today watching my channel, uh, if you can. Let's see. Uh, Teresa, if you heard the expression, she, she dove into the deep end or they dove into the deep end. Teresa is a late bloomer who dove into the deep end. I thought I dove, dove into the deep end, but no, no. She has totally d uh, dived, dived. She totally dove in, <laughs> into the deep end. Um, uh, it, it, it chill, is it chill or chilly? I can't see it that well. Uh, I can't see every question. It depends on how fast they go. Uh, 10 gallon minimum for elderberry plant. Yeah, I definitely. The Natural State Gardener and Homestead. Hello from Arkansas. I think this is the first time you've joined us. Thank you so much. Um, what's it like in Arkansas? Uh, let everybody know and let your let let everybody know your name because we're very familiar with each other on this uh, on this live stream. Uh, say hello, everyone, to the Natural State Gardener and Homesteads. Uh, so tell us your name. Give us a name. I believe Loquat is in the Citrus family. I think so. Um, Leslie, I, Kumquat is just too sour. Yes, I know, Steph. It's unbelievable. Well, they steal them for money, um, but destroying them, I'm not saying it's terrible to steal them, but it's even worse to destroy them. Oh, Steph is a uh, a, a lady from uh, named Stephanie from Belgium. Wonderful. Mm. Joshua, remind me where you are. Jo okay, Joshua is going to lead this because I don't have much of a voice today. Jeff. Uh, what is pronounced Jeff? G is it Geoff? Hey, Ed. Let's see. Let's see. It's chill. I'm sorry, chill. Uh, okay, Ed, we're going to sing a song. It's rained for two weeks in Arkansas. Ooh. Uh, okay, everybody. I think I'm caught up. Let's sing this song because I think we all need this. And I don't know if an, another song that, let's see if I can even, I don't know if I can sing. Please forgive me if I'm uh, too hoarse, but, oh, here we go. Is everybody ready? Please, please sing this. I'll give you one, I'll give you 20 more seconds to Google the lyrics to Let It Be by John Lennon. <clears throat> when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is Still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah. 
there will be an answer, let it be. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> I'm so hoarse. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine on to until tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Daryl, come on, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Okay, I sort of butchered that, but um, I just wanted to share that because I think we all need it. <laughs> Joshua, thank you. Um, you'll have to go back, Joshua, I did a live stream. Uh, let's see, I can't remember. It was a sunset live stream. If you go back in my live stream and you go back, I sang hallelujah at sunset with the sun sun going down. And it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. And you can see that my voice is much better when I'm not hoarse. <laughs> hey, Mary, what did I say? Did I say John Lennon? I'm so sorry. Oh my God, Mary, thank you for correcting me. How did I make that mistake? Uh, Mary says, it wasn't Lennon. It was Paul McCartney wrote about words of his own mother, Mary. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, Joshua. Um, thank you, Mary, for, for correcting me. Mary is one of my oldest friends, everybody. Please say hello, hello to Mary Zisk in New Jersey. Uh, Ridgefield, I think. Um, Ridgefield, New Jersey. She's a graphic artist and an illustrator. And she's published a book. Uh, she's published more than one book. Her first book, if, if any of you have ever adopted um, a child on your own, she adopted a, a child. Uh, she went to Russia and adopted a young girl from Russia. And um, that is her daughter. And I, I just love you, Mary. You're amazing. Why don't you put the name of your books, Mary, on the, just in case anybody's interested, put the name of your books on uh, on the uh, chat so they can look you up. You can also find her on, on uh, Facebook. Thank you, Gina. I, I will when I get off, chill. Okay, Paul McCartney. Oh, why did I think it was Lennon? What was, what was, Mary, what was Lennon's uh, big peace anthem? I, and why did I get that mixed up? It's, I don't know how my mother's doing, Lisa. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yes, Lori, I am isolating. I am isolating to stay safe. And uh, and I'm isolating in this. Uh, it's just like, just imagine a 2,200 square foot house with a garage and an art studio in a dark room. Well, I, I sold all that. I didn't bring any of that here. But just and just imagine, and then all of that gardening stuff. Remember, I used to have all of that stuff on the side of the house. Somehow whittling that down, and now I'm in a two-bedroom apartment with no garage, no storage, other than just a little cabinet for gardening stuff. There's nothing out there that's valuable because the hinges on those two I put a, a lock on it, but the, those hinges, the crowbar would pop off those doors in a split second. So um, I can't put anything valuable out there. Can't leave anything valuable in my car. Well, I couldn't before because I, I never could lock up my car. My car was always on the street or my, my driveway. Let's see. This sun is kind of hitting me in the face. Oh, let me see if I can get this. 
There, that's better. Oops. <laughs> now I have wrinkles. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Okay, everybody, it is, I'm running out of battery and it's 8.50 and I'm probably running out of voice. And uh, it seems like there was a lot more I wanted to talk about. I'm not sure what it was. Oh, let's see. Lori, um, if you're taking care of your three grandchildren, um, my, my hat's off to you. That's a big, big job. Um, but thank you for checking in quickly. And uh, Mary, you too. Stay healthy. Uh, did you manage to put in your... Thank you, Edwin. Thank you, Haffy. Uh, Mary, did you put in the names of your books? Thank you, Joshua. I appreciate that. Darlene Powell, hi from North Florida. Nice voice. Well, I don't have much of a voice. I want to sing something. Um, thank you, Leslie. Uh, thank you, Martha. <laughs> uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, let's see. Um, Darlene is writing, say hello to Darlene. I think you checked in late, Darlene. Hi from North Florida. And uh, thank you, Amal. I hope that was a, a little bit of an inspiration. Um, that song and I, not because I'm trying to share my croaky voice right now, but just because I think we all need it. Lipman family, sending love, wishing the best. Where are you writing from Lipman family? I forget. Uh, let's see, Gina, the natural state gardener and homestead. Wait, you didn't you tell us your name? I can, I can only imagine. You wish I could sing, I can only imagine. Uh, Joshua, let me see if I can find the lyrics to that. Uh, because I don't know it very well, and I'm not sure if I can. Uh, lyrics, lyrics. Let's see. Hmm. You know what? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Joshua, I don't know it well enough to just launch into that. And it's too beautiful a song to butcher. So let me just practice it and I'll do it on the next live stream. How's that? So that means you have to tune in. Thank you, Lipman family. What's your What's your first name? And I really appreciate it. I really need to call my mother. You know, um, she's at a, a a place now where she she all her her long term memory was always really sharp. And uh, I noticed on the last trip that it's not so sharp. And and I of course had planned to I had planned to be in Phoenix next week. That's not going to happen. So I'm not going to get to see uh, my Phoenix, um, my Phoenix friends next week. And um, in April, I was going to try to go to Austin to see my son. And I don't know if I can do that. I don't have any plane tickets to go. And uh, in May, we, uh, my son and at least one of my sons and I were planning to be to spend Mother's Day with my mother and have a three-generation Mother's Day. And I don't, everything's on hold until we find out what happens with all this, with all this um, virus. Let's see, I think I'm gonna have to do it like this because the sun is, you know, this is a, this is a new experience, everybody, trying to, trying to operate in a new space and figuring out where the light is. Uh, as a photographer, um, if you are a photographer or if you've had experience with photography, you know that the, uh, the most important thing is 
where's the light? And uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm literally balancing my laptop on a stool that's rounded. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Martha. I, I oh, wait. Are you talking to Kate or are you talking to Kay? Um, imagine, imagine the song. Imagine. Oh, um, Im Im imagine lyrics. It, it, is that what I'm thinking of, uh, John Lennon? No, that's Yoko Ono. Oh, so she wrote it. I didn't realize that. It says here that Imagine was written by Yoko Ono. So she wrote it and he recorded it. Let's see. Let me get it in my head. You know, I've got that other uh, Imagine song. Uh, let's see. If I could just get the first note in my head, I could sing it. Um, let's see. can't get the first note in my head for some reason, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us. In the world, world is one. Imagine, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy. Imagine there's no heaven. Uh, it's easy if you're doing, I can so hear it, but I can't get the right note. I don't want to butcher this. It's too beautiful. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. You may say I'm a dreamer. You may say I'm, but I'm not. But I'm not. But I'm not the only one. Okay, I tell you what. I'll practice that, Happy. I will practice imagine and imagine. Hey, Brian. Uh, thank you, Karen. Where are you writing from? Uh, let's see. The Natural State Gardener and Homestead. Did you ever tell me your name? Because that's a very long title. Um, Jamila, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, everybody, hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, uh, chill camera for my shooting my videos. I use this. I believe it's called a 7DD, uh, Canon 7DD. It's, yeah, no, I'm sorry, not DD. It's 77D. And I have a Rode... This is a Rode microphone. I'm not sure what model it is. This is called a dead cat, <laughs> uh, this furry thing. Uh, but what I find is wind, even with this thing, the wind obliterates the sound. So uh, I, I have issues. I have issues with this camera. I have so I get so frustrated with this camera. But at least it has a flip screen, and so you can you can at least line up your shot um, for years. Year, literally for six years, I used a camera without a flip screen, and I would. What you wouldn't be able to see is I would go behind the camera, check it, go sit down, adjust my clothing, and record it, and then I would go look at it. 
and I would, it would be a little bit off or it would be too high and you can't tell. And I would check and check and check and check and check. And it was just ridiculous. And I finally got this, but I, I have issues with this too. If anybody has a camera that they really highly recommend, please let me know. I also, last year, I also upgraded my GoPro. And I was dead set on, you know, because I, I, I couldn't imagine doing any kind of a drone shot over my property because it's 5,200 square feet and it's narrow and it's long. And there's no way, drones are, are no, noisy. And there's just no way to put a drone up there without annoying somebody. I mean, somebody put a drone up who was thinking of selling their house behind me. And the drone was right over my head when I was trying to film. And I was so annoyed. <clears throat> I got so angry. So I don't want to make anybody angry. And I don't want to annoy anybody because drones are noisy. And so I never got a drone. But I thought, upgrade the GoPro because I had the very first model of Go GoPro. And I upgraded the GoPro. Never have taken it out of the package. No. Nope. Have never set it up. Maybe, maybe that's something I'll get to do this year. You know, last year was just um, incredibly uh, challenging. Let's see, uh, Haffy. I have not started sprouts. Half John. Half John sent me. Uh, I, I know where the jars are, John. That's a big plus. I know where the jars are. I have been sick. I haven't even done my dishes. So, no, I haven't started sprouts. How's it going with your mother at your house, Daryl? Oh, wow, Lori. That's quite something. You are in Houston. Karen is in Houston. Grandma Sandy, thank you. I, I love you, too. How's your husband doing? Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. I, I, I. Uh, Christina is reminded me of something. So, so Hazel who called yesterday and told me about the woman who's dropping off my vegetables today, vegetables and fruits. She told me that, um, she had been told that a certain hospital unit was running out of masks and she found a pattern or as she says, pattern because she's British she found a pattern. It's a very easy pattern. So all of you, if any of you have any free time and you know how to sew, I will try to post, uh, let's see. If I can get a photo, I'll post it on my community page, the pattern. And you can make masks. And she, Hazel, who of course sews like a fiend, Fiend sounds like a negative term, but she, she sews like a fiend in the best possible way. She is making masks today to take to the emergency room uh, to, to supplement the masks and that you can rewash them and you can sp spritz them with um, lemon water or vinegar water or whatever. Uh, to refresh them if you've if you've been around people so you don't have to be constantly washing them and so so I had um, she's dropping her box this woman's name is Katrine who's dropping my box and she makes fermented vegetables so she's bringing me four jars of fermented beets fermented vegetables are really good for you as you know and um, it's good for your digestion and the, the probiotic and everything. And so she's bringing me uh, fermented vegetables as well as a box of fruit and vegetables from the organic farm. And she's dropping off Hazel's box first and then my box. And she's going to bring me a mask 
So the next time I go online and I may, you know, because of our situation, I may do more live streams because it's, it's easy. I can just do it from my, you know, from inside here and I don't have to, to be outside and, and be around people trying to shoot a video. So, uh, probably do that. Anyway, I'm running out of battery and I'm running out of voice and I want to, I'm so glad we sang that song when I, when we did, let's see if I, there's any other, oh good Sandy, that's good news. Oh wow, yes, you are lucky. See you Lori, take care, Teresa. Okay, so Teresa, of course, Teresa's on this, and she's already seen the pattern with a photo all over Facebook. So, um, uh, Teresa, maybe you can connect with Christina and uh, tell her how to, or, 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 or Teresa, can you find that link really quickly and, and post it here in the chat? Or actually post it in a, a comment under the video, say, here's the pattern for the mask, um, so people can find it. Right, Haffy, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and how's Petey? Is Petey happy to have her there, Daryl? Petey is Daryl's beautiful dog that I would, I, I love dogs. I can't have a dog, but if I could have a dog, I would steal that dog from, from Daryl. I'd probably have to have a gun to <laughs> shoot my way out because Daryl's not letting that dog go. Thank you, Grandma Sandy. Ives are a fantastic option anytime. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what I'll do then. Um, is everybody kind of home? Is any time during the day, if I feel up to it, just to do a live stream? <laughs> I know, Daryl, you are so lucky with that dog. That is the coolest dog ever. Yes, what is it about kraut, uh, Haffy, that is so good for you? I was just, I, my, my brain's not all with it today, but I, I, I know that sauerkraut is supposed to be really good for you. And is it, does it boost the immune system? I think it does. I think that's what I read. At any rate, she was telling me what all she makes. She makes, you know, I'm not a big garlic eater. I know a lot of people eat garlic for, oh, I almost forgot, for immune support. Um, and I'm not a big garlic fan. I, I mean, I, I love to make things with fresh garlic, but anyway, she, I said, well, what else do you have? Cause I didn't have, I didn't have change for a 20 and I don't want to try to get change. So I said, I'll have another jar or something. What else do you have? And she said she had fermented garlic. I'm going, okay, I'll try it. Uh, Brian, are you a teacher? I forget. And I'm, I'm concerned about Johnny because Johnny works in a pharmacy. So sick people are coming in there. And Johnny, you have to be very careful. I wanted to... I wanted to share... You know how I love to share packages. So I got a gift this week from a woman who I really haven't been in touch with in years, but she contacted me recently. I mean, we were we were Facebook friends, but I hadn't heard, heard from her in years. This is from Olive. And now I, I don't remember. She described this, and I don't remember, but it's something that she made. And I'm hoping that there is a description inside. I believe it's a balm or something like, oh, it's two jars. I feel that. Yes. This is her homemade balm. Isn't that lovely? And I'm just going to open one right away. 
because my skin is so dry. I'm getting used to this forced air heat here. Mmm. Boy, that smells good. I'm trying to think what that smells like. With my limited nasal. It's complicated. It's got a lot of different kinds of stuff in there, but look at that. Beautiful. And since I only have one, oh, oh, boy, does that feel good. Oh, man. I tell you. I didn't even know she was doing this kind of thing, but she is, and she sent me some, so that feels so good. Anyway, it's a challenge getting used to being in an apartment after having your own house for 25 years. Uh, so I'm sure I'm going to continue to learn to adjust. Um, there are very nice people. Drop the lid. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and there's another little. This one. Mmm, that smells different. So this is just maybe a little travel size. I love that. And oops, let's see. Oh, look at this. I, you know, I, this. Oh my goodness, this. These are earrings. You have no idea how much I appreciate that, uh, Olive. If you're watching because I'm assuming she made them because I have a lot of earrings, but I don't know where they are. And I have been, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been wearing these same pine cones, these little silver pine cones that I got from Heather Muro at Stone Mala's. And she also made this necklace, this quartz, because I understand that quartz is good. And boy, did I need it this week. And then this is from Diva Danielle. Um, that, this is a gift. These I bought. And then these are, look at these. Wait, that sun is really making things difficult. Let's go over this way. You can really see what a disaster my, oh, there's a nice shot of them. You can see what a disaster my office is. I can barely move in here. You know, I should, probably should have cleaned those off with the alcohol before I put them in my ears. I forgot. Uh, I think the first time you wear earrings, you should do that. Oh, well. But I love stars. You know, I'm a star. <laughs> I'm a star of my own channel. <laughs> I said this. I'm going to leave you with this. This fun thought, you know, you know, Doug, my, I've got a fan above my head. Doug is, um, of Doug and Stacy is, has been a huge support. And he, uh, when, last year when I was trying to fi figure out what I wanted to do and, 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 uh, and everything, when I was out visiting them, but later on, later he said this on the phone and, and I said, he says, okay, just leave LA. You know, Daryl wants me to come to Tennessee. Um, okay, Bill. Thank you. Carolyn. Good morning. Um, I just saw you. Uh, and Doug, I, I said, but Doug, I still, I don't want to leave LA because I still have, uh, aspirations to be acting. And, you know, if I, if I get union acting jobs, then that pays into my pension. And, uh, you know, I still want to be able to do that. And so he goes, Kay, this is your gig. Late Bloomer is your gig. <laughs> he really, he really, Doug is a really smart guy. <laughs> He's also very funny. <laughs> I love them. Okay. Um, good morning, Curtis. I'm just about to sign off because I'm losing my voice and my, and my laptop is redlining and the battery. And, um, in order to get it plugged in, 
is behind this big heavy piece of furniture. And that's just not going to be possible. <laughs> so thank you, Amal. <laughs> Where is my, let's see. <clears throat> I am grabbing my mouse so I can see if I've missed any. Thank you, Grandma Sandy. Uh, Kevin, let's see. What are you saying, Kevin? My niece is leaving San Diego on Monday. Her husband is on the, is on the Navy hospital ship, and he's deploying sometime where Monday she is up and leaving and going to Texas to stay with my sister. Okay, so she's not leaving, leaving. She's just leaving. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, when I was down in San Diego, you know, Kevin, I don't know if you saw that uh, that uh, that live stream I did from Coronado. But my my older cousin Steve was a commander um, on a destroyer during the Persian Gulf War. His first his first deployment was Vietnam in the Navy. So <clears throat> we he took me down to the uh, he took me on base and I saw the ships and stuff, but I could not share any photos. It's, it's not, you're not supposed to do that. Harag, you, uh, good morning from Pasadena, but I, now I'm getting off. Yes, Joshua, you can. Uh, my, my, uh, address is post office box 1602. And that's Pacific Palisades, California, 90272. Uh, I now reside in Santa Monica, but I'm keeping my same post office box because I'm very close. Um, I wish, I wish um, your, Kevin, I wish your niece's husband well. Is he, is he actually a medical person or is he running the ship? Now she has to travel during this. Um, I wish her well. Carolyn, are you talking about hanging my clothes on the line yesterday? Um, it, uh, Mr. Tom, the, the basic reason is because I do not have a theatrical agent. Sometime about 20 years ago, it became all of the, the big agencies sort of swallowed up medium-sized agencies, and a lot of the small agencies went out of business. And so the, the larger talent agencies package everything now. So, for example, let's just say CAA, for example, Creative Artists Agency. It's huge and very powerful, and they will have a screenwriter as a client, and this screenwriter will come up with a movie, will write a movie. And they will say, okay, who do we want to direct this movie? Well, they're going to use one of their directors. Um, who do we want to star in this movie? Well, they're going to use one of their stars. And then who do we want to be the second level, level of stars? You know, so we're going to use this, this, and this. Or if it's a TV show, same thing. They're going to put the showrunner in there. All they're, they're going to handle all of these people. And so uh, the only roles that are, that are left are the, are the little roles and, and, and they get, they get farmed out to some of the smaller agencies. Many of the smaller agencies, including mine, went out of business. And um, this was at least 10 years ago. So I just started focusing on Late Bloomer because at one point I, I just felt like, you know, it's not like I'm a young starlet or anymore, a starlet anymore or anything. So uh, I felt like with all the focus on social media now that I would have a better chance getting work if I had a, a big following on social media. And even one starlet uh, in one movie, she she made a public statement and she said, you know, there were more, there were better qualified actresses for this role. But she said, but I had a bigger Twitter following and I got the part. And so um, I have just been, you know, my my channel has had a dual purpose, a triple purpose, really, since from the beginning is I, I wanted to be on camera and I wanted to be uh, inspiring people in some way. And, um, and then when I, when I had this epiphany about late bloomer, I thought, this is it. You know, if I 
maybe I, maybe I won't get to Broadway. Maybe I won't ever have that Broadway job, but, uh, but I can, but I can inspire people around the world. And so that's what I've been focused on. And I've just been totally focused on late bloomer for like eight years now. So I still have a commercial agent, uh, but we don't get auditions anymore because of the internet. The internet has changed the union business and, um, the, uh, the, the, even the big companies forward and all the, all, all the big companies, the big car companies and all those people that used to, uh, spend big budgets on national commercials for national television. They don't do it anymore. They, uh, they hire non-union talent and they, they give them $5,000 and, and then two months later they make a new one. They used to make a campaign once a year, a big campaign, multi-million dollar campaign, and um, if you were a, a union actor and you were lucky enough to get in one of those commercials, it could make up. It could make the. Uh, it, it could make the salary for your whole for your whole year, and that that's happened to me a few times. So, um, but not in a while, <laughs> not since 2012. But that's that's what happened in 2011 and 2012. Is I got two national commercials, and so I decided to make a show, and since this was before everybody else started and, and just did everything themselves and didn't spend any money, I said, well, I'm going to make a show because, you know, I wanted it to be entertaining. I, I had titles and music and animations and I wanted it to be uh, appropriate and um, engaging for children. I made these short videos and then YouTube changed everything. <laughs> so, uh, so here we are. So here I am. And um, you're right. You're right, Tom. Uh, I should be working. Uh, but it, but I would have to put a lot of my focus on that. So um, we'll see what happens this year. Everything's, everything's new and everything's changed uh, in my life. So we'll see what happens. And um, I'm hopeful that that will happen. I'm hopeful. I, I'm hopeful I can balance both. And uh, and we'll see. Oh, 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 she is packing up and leaving for good, Kevin. I, I missed that. Okay. He was told that he will probably not leave the ship until... Oh, my goodness. He is a corpse corpsman, and they are really taking this seriously. Taking this meaning the virus... Yes, uh, thank not only him, but thank your niece, because the uh, as I know so well from my cousin and and his wife Lucy, you know, uh, having a, a partner is just so integral to the long term success of a career in the military, and um, very often the wife. The wife, if they if they travel with, I mean, my my uh, co my cousin's wife traveled with him because he was a commander, so they lived on base and they were always moving and she always coordinated all of that and she worked. She was a teacher. Wherever they went, she was teaching. So it it's it's um, it's it's a huge commitment and um, thank you for their service. My father was in the Navy and uh, during World War II, and uh, he, uh, I think he did three years, and then he did six years of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> what do you call it, <sighs> serving on the weekends, I'm blanking. It's not the National Guard. What is it? Um, thank you, Curtis. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Daisy Joe. better late than never. Hi. What's the weather like up there? Well, Kevin, I still hear that the that there the the uh, 
college kids are partying down in Florida. I, I, I hope that's not true. I really, I really hope young people start taking this very, very seriously. Oh, Christina, thank you. Um, you know, uh, I would love to, uh, I'd love to do something again. And now that I've sold my house, I can either buy a property or maybe I can make my own film. <laughs> One or the other. Can't do both. Um, I have to figure all this out because this is the first time in my life where I've, I've had a real opportunity to do something on my own. That's so you know, all, all suggestions are welcome, you know. Having my own TV show is difficult because you have to have a network that, that's willing to take that on. And um, as you recall, in the beginning of last January, I had a number of people contacting me interested in developing, well, I had a few, I had two or three opportunities where people were interested in developing a show with me. And uh, you know, just because the production company likes me and, I, and and thinks that there's potential doesn't mean that they're able to sell it to a network. So that never happened. And uh, so I just said, well, let me just focus on building my channel. And I tripled my subscribers in one year. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe now if it keeps growing, I don't know what's going to happen with the virus, but uh, how that's going to impact YouTube. But if it, if my uh, subscribers keep growing, you know, uh, there's more potential for income and more potential for sponsors. I've never had a sponsor, if you can believe, you know, so I've just been focused on trying to inspire people. <laughs> so now I have to get I have to get focused in other ways. You're right, Carolyn. Thank you, Christina. Reserves. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> you know, and I hardly, I, 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 you know, that, that happened before I was, so I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. My wife is an ORN. Ah, yes, Kevin. Yes, I wanted to. I wanted to mention that is we have. We still have people that are working to keep things going. We, we still have electricity. We, our sanitation is still being picked up. Our military is still protecting us um, and doing all that they can. And uh, I am so grateful for all of that. Uh, look what I just found right in front of me. I don't know how that happened. Lufa seeds. Does anybody want these? Send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to, to um, Post Office Box 1602, Pacific Palisades, 902, California, 90272, and I'll send you these. Uh, put two stamps on it. Now, these are 2016, but there's at least 30 seeds in here. And so I know you're going to get five or six fines. <laughs> I planted about... I think I planted about 10 or 12 seeds last year of 16 seeds and I had, I had five vines. So I know there, there is some, um, uh, they're still good. Reservist. Yes. Lipman. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Tom, that would be great. But do you know how much money that would make?